don't understand. Why did this have to happen to me? I feel like I just can't make sense of things. I need answers. Where is God? Hello and welcome to Raw Questions Relevant Answers. This is a program designed to answer your questions, whether it be about life, about God, about church, any of these things, we want to hear from you. And we're gonna do that today. We have questions that have been sent in via Facebook. And specifically today, we're looking at the topic of rules and regulations. My name is Michelle Dukamis. I'm a college professor, so I hear a lot about rules and regulations and what people like and don't like. And I'd like you to meet my co-host, this is Dee Casper, who is a brand evangelist for ARTV. And we also have Mark Payden, who is a freelance uh, filmmaker. And so, guys, we're going to dive right into this big question right now. And I want to ask you a question. Why is it, when we talk about rules and regulations, in the church, why doesn't the church teach us the reasoning behind the rules that we currently have? This is sent in from a man age 21 in Tennessee. You wanna start with this one? Sure, yeah, I think, I think there's a couple different ways that we can look at this question. Um, I think the first thing is that oftentimes we don't, as a church, don't always know the reasons for the rules that we have. Um, you know, we, God wants us to have a rational faith, a faith in which we understand why he wants the principles behind what he gives us. Um, but I think the, uh, the other thing, too, that I would say to this question is regardless of the church's involvement in their exposition of the reason for the rules, we need to know them. As individual Christians, we are going to be held individually accountable to God. And at the end of time, we can't say, oh, but the church didn't teach me the reasons for these rules. You know, we have to go to God ourselves and, and ask him, Lord, what is my duty? What do you want me to do? And earnestly seek his word to find those answers on that. I would say that like when we use the word the church in a general sense, the people who are, are enforcing or teaching those things now may not be aware of the discourse or the context on why we as a church originally adopted these positions. Mm -hmm. Just to kind of separate the mm -hmm. two. Like, it, I, I wouldn't say that we, we aimlessly came to these positions as a corporate body, but that mm -hmm. there were rationales behind it. Mm -hmm. But it's because it's what we've done for so long, that's mm -hmm. just what we do. Mm -hmm. Like, don't question that. This is just who we are and what we do. Sometimes people may feel that that's the way that they're addressed. Mm -hmm. But I, I just want to make it clear that there is a rationale that goes into it when we had these things to start. Mm -hmm. I think something that could be done better at this stage is communicating the why, not just the what. Mm -hmm. and, and even sometimes the how. Uh, mm -hmm. We may know what God expects, but we don't know how to get there. Right. So I think that, that kind of helps to, to give a context for these things. But two, I think that it would be far more helpful in the way in which we lead our children, whether it be as parents or as leaders or as mentors, instead of just disciplining someone, disciplining someone by saying, you know, don't do that, that's bad. Mm -hmm. it, it's very, very helpful to explain, this is the reason why this isn't mm -hmm. a good thing to be doing. Mm -hmm. This is what the Word of God says about this particular topic. It makes a big difference, but a lot of times our young people are just dealt with quickly of don't, that's bad, mm -hmm. moving on now. Mm -hmm. And it ends up kind of leading to this bitterness because they just feel controlled as opposed to reasoned with. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things we're told in some of our, our writings as a church regarding how to raise children in education, uh, particularly in the context of education, is that we should bring them to a point where they recognize that what they've done is wrong mm -hmm. and then enlist their will in its correction. Mm -hmm. And I think the only way that's going to happen is if we communicate why what has happened is wrong. Mm. So they understand mm -hmm. why this is an ideal way to live. And then three, inviting them to be part of the process of the solution. Uh, I think this is an ideal answer to mishandling of this um, in other contexts. It's like a maturing in the Christian faith then, yeah. I guess. You know, when a child is really young, you might say, hey, just don't run in the street. Right. And they might be too young to fully understand, but right. as they grow up, they need to understand that context in order to really be able to apply that principle in different situations. Right. Right. And unfortunately, sometimes our churches have failed at that. Yeah. Maybe not knowing how to explain, or maybe mm -hmm. even um, because sadly, some of us in the church may not have studied ourselves yeah. why we do some of these yeah. things. So I like what you said, Mark. It is important that we each study for ourselves. Yes. Uh, we, yeah. we are the church. Right. Yes. And we right. do need to be able to know the reason for what we believe and why. And it could right. be a multi-generational systemic failure that, you know, yeah. 
our parents may not have been told the why, and so they just told us the what. <laughs> yeah. And so that could be, but the buck stops with me. Yeah. Right. I'm going to be yeah. accountable to God for the decisions that I make, and I need to know for myself what I believe and why. Yeah. And I think that's a good answer. It doesn't excuse the abuse of how it's happened before, right. but we individually still have a role to play in searching for ourselves. That's a great yeah. point. Here's another question, pretty heartfelt one. This comes from a 15-year-old young lady in Tennessee. It says, I want to go to heaven, but I feel like I will never be good enough or able to follow all the Christian standards. And I don't even know if I want to. I feel like God is too controlling, even though I realize it might just be people making him out to be that way. But then I think they're spiritual so maybe they're right. Hmm. What would you say to someone like that? First of all, I just want to say that I appreciate your transparency and your mm -hmm. honest and yeah. your honesty. Like I, the whole point of this program is raw questions, not to be crass, but it's best and helpful, I think, for people to communicate as honestly as possible. I think one of the main issues at stake here is that they have not been communicated with in a way that shows the value that they have for one, and two, that God has no desire to control people. Mm -hmm. God only operates under the tenets of love, and he want, his ideal situation is self-governance. Hmm. A well-informed person exercising their will with the information necessary to make right decisions. Mm -hmm. That's the way that God operates. But sometimes when people fail us in this regard, our assumption is this person claims to know God, this person hurt me, God must endorse what they did to me. And that's not necessarily true. There are many instances, and we'll cover this, I think, in a later episode on the topic of bad religion. There are many instances in which people are hurt by religious folks and in mm -hmm. the Bible, and God literally distances himself from the behavior of those religious individuals and says, I didn't do that. I'm not like that, and I'm having to clean up that mess. Mm -hmm. And so maybe even if people are good, that doesn't mean that they have correctly represented God yes. in every instance. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Here's another thing that I would say to this, too. You know, it, it's this, one of the sentiments in this is, I feel like I can never get all these right. Mm. Um, amen. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. We, yeah. we sometimes feel like we have to be the ones to get it right. But l listen to the words uh, of Christ to Isaiah, the whole, and this is in Isaiah 1, 5 and 6, the whole head is sick and the whole heart faint. From the sole of the foot even to the head, there is no soundness in it, but wounds and bruises and putrefying sores. This is our spiritual condition. Mm -hmm. And another verse, I'm, I'm blanking on the reference right now, but it says, can the Ethiopian change his skin or the leopard his spots? then may you also do good who are accustomed to doing evil. We cannot just change ourselves and love these things. But the power is in Ezekiel 36 that God promises to transform our hearts, to take the, the sinful, polluted heart that loves sin and hates righteousness and changes it into a heart and a mind that is in love with the commandments of God, that finds its joy in the beauty of holiness and, and loves to do all of God's requirements. And then it's not about trying to, to find the lowest possible um, the lowest possible standard for right so that we can barely scrape by, then, it's, then it becomes our goal to go exactly with what God wants us to be. And that all has to start with a heart change. So if you feel like, I just can't get all this right, praise God. Yeah. You know, I'd like to add something to that that has to do with how do we know if that's God saying those voices? Mm -hmm. Well, something that's really helped me is remembering if, if that voice is causing me to say, all right, I need to go to Jesus. I lack, I don't have this right. I need to go to Jesus. Then that, that's the Lord, that's the Holy Spirit that brings that conviction. If the voice is saying, you're never good enough, you're yeah. not gonna get it right, you're just never gonna yeah. make it, that's a voice of shame and it's yeah. not of the Lord. That's yeah. of Satan. Yeah. Yeah. And so when it is God convicting us, it'll be a voice that drives us to the feet of Jesus yeah. to go to him. Yeah. That's it. When men see their nothingness, then they're prepared to be clothed with the righteousness mm. of Christ. We have to recognize our inability to then put our full trust in his ability. I think it's yeah. a great point. Yeah. Another big question, guys. This comes from right. a 16 year old girl mm -hmm. in Maryland. Mm -hmm. I am here, but I am not here. Mm -hmm. In my place is someone who follows the rules because I have to. I put the right answers on my Bible quizzes because I'll get an F if I don't. 
If I ever had a chance, my, if I ever have a chance, my school ruined it. My teachers judge people who live differently than them, and it makes me wonder how they would view me if they saw me outside this place. It strikes my heart as someone who is a teacher myself. Uh, but this is a big deal. How do we deal with this? I think it's super important, again, to understand the principles and the spirit in which God intends. And those things are found in the Word of God, mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to the um, misrepresentation and the failed approach of someone meaning well. First of all, these people in these positions of authority in a majority, if not all the situations, are as sincere as the day is yeah. long. Not intending to cause harm, not intending to push people away. They have a zeal, but not according to knowledge, the Apostle Paul says. And there were many people in his day that practiced religion that looked just like that. Mm -hmm. Not understanding that the law was a means to an end, not the end itself. Mm -hmm. The whole point of rules, of regulations, of reforms is to enhance our relationship with Jesus, to remove the hindrances, the things that kind of encumber the ground and, and make our growth less easy or more mm -hmm. difficult. And they make it more difficult. The whole point of those was to draw us closer to Him. And so if we understood that God gave us these because He loves us and wants a closer relationship with us, we would give Him the benefit of the doubt and the things we don't understand mm -hmm. initially. And this is why we as leaders need to take this one on the chin mm -hmm. and recognize that how I communicate what God expects is just mm -hmm. as important as communicating what He expects. Mm -hmm. And I just want to take a moment to apologize on behalf of people who have failed you in your life, who should have given you a better picture but didn't. God doesn't operate that way. God is reasonable, He's rational, He's filled with love, and His precepts only lead to pleasures evermore when followed as He intended them mm. to be. And so I just want to make sure that that's clear. You know, there's one other thing too that I, I kind of want to touch on here, and, and we were kind of talking about this a little bit before. Yeah. Um, the fallacy fallacy. <laughs> um, in other words, if, if you're familiar with this, with the different fallacies, it's basically um, how things that logical fallacies that don't actually work in reasoning. So for instance, the fallacy fallacy states that just because somebody's reasoning is fallacious or bad, wrong, doesn't mean that their, um, that their point is necessarily bad. Mm -hmm. And this is something too that I think really applies to us as Christians. Just because a authority figure, a pastor, a teacher treats us in a bad way, doesn't mean that the God that they represent mm -hmm. is bad. Yes. So I would just encourage you, be, be intellectually honest mm -hmm. with yourself. Mm -hmm. um, don't listen to, I, I mean, I think all of us have been hurt by some religious person at some time. And, and like, I'm very hurt, right? But that doesn't mean that we have to push back against God, against even maybe what they were trying to tell us. What it means is let's disambiguate God from the negative behavior and seek earnestly and say, God, what are you trying to teach me? And then I think we'll have a lot more clarity. Yeah, I think a, an honest question we need to ask is, is it true? Not do I like how it was mm -hmm. done, not do I like how this person went about it or what was said. Is it true? And I owe it to God to search that out for myself before I reject it outright. Mm -hmm. I love how the Bible says, you know, come now and let us reason together. And that's another big thing is, is God wants us to ask these questions. Mm -hmm. And so I really love how people are asking these questions. If you're asking that, that's a good thing. And God mm -hmm. understands yeah. that. And he sends his Holy Spirit to help us, to empower us so mm -hmm. that we can do the things that otherwise we could not do on our own. And that's the beautiful part. And so thank you so much for joining us for this. And I hope that as you continue to ask and seek the Lord, that the Lord through his spirit will come in and lead and guide. If you want to send your questions, find us on Facebook, Raw Questions Relevant Answers or RQRA3ABN. And we will see you next time. God bless. Mm -hmm.